This picture shows the winding machinery that controlled the lifts that lowered and raised both men and equipment into and out of the shaft. The pictured machinery is in the east winding house. But my story doesn't start at Ledston Look. It starts seven mile away in the mining town of Castleford. When I was growing up, barges were still used on the river to deliver coal to power stations and to the railways in Leeds. Alison's flour mill was always great on a windy day when the soap suds from the weir used to blow into the town centre. My mother used to bring us there in the pram, we used to sit and watch the passenger and coal trains pass by. Ambler Street front and back where I was born and the co-op dairy where the electric milk carts used to leave to deliver all the milk 
and the Vicar Street Social Club is where my grandfather and dad used to go for a drink after work. Soon, all this would be in the distant past. As we travelled those seven miles, little did we know it would change our lives forever. So this was it, Ledston Luck. Most of the men worked or had worked down the pit. This is where we learned about the meaning of neighbourliness. We make true friends. And most of all, we learnt about our social upbringing. We played together. We went to school together. We ate dripping sandwiches together. We went on outings together. We cared for one another. We soon learned that an old new world had opened up before us. And we certainly made the most of the beautiful countryside that surrounded the village of Ledston Lough. We ate sugar and bread, white bread and real butter, and drank soft drinks with sugar in it. But we weren't overweight because we were always outside playing. We would leave home in the morning and play all day. As long as we were back before the street lights came on, no one was able to reach us all day and we were okay. We had freedom, failure and success and responsibility and we learned how to deal with it. Good morning, everybody. It's half past six, and the BBC Light programme's beginning another day's broadcasting. First, here's a summary of the news. Budget day will be a fortnight on Tuesday, the day that Parliament reassembles after the Easter recess. And that's the end of the news summary. Now, until half past eight, we have our program of morning music. We would spend hours building our go-karts out of old prams and then ride them down the hill only to find out we forgot the brakes. We built tree houses and dens and played in riverbeds with matchbox cars. We didn't have playstations and Nintendos, no mobile phones or anything like that. All we had were friends and we went outside and found them. We fell out of trees, got cut, broke bones and teeth, and there were no lawsuits in them days. Only girls at pierced ears. We ate worms and made muck pies out of dirt 
and the worms did not live inside us forever. You could only buy Easter eggs and hot cross buns at Easter time. We were given air guns and catapults for our tenth birthday. Another sunny Saturday morning. That's where I lived. Number one, the cottagers led them look. But we're all in a bit of a rush this morning. We've got to get down to the secret pond where we're all meeting. We're on our way to Lexton Lodge to see if we can see anything to do with Dick Turpin. We've all been told that he used to hang out round there. And then suddenly, we saw the four turrets of Ledston Lodge. But we didn't find anything to do with Dick Turpin.
when we'd been to the lodge, we headed for Letcham Village to the pub so we could buy pop and crisps before we started our way home. Some of us would buy sweets as well for the journey. Getting to school in Kippets was an expedition in itself. The bus used to pull in at Cross Hills, and if we were lucky, we'd three minutes to run up the hill to get into school. When we woke up and it was a school day and it was snowing, we wondered whether the bus would arrive. There was no antifreeze in the diesel or in the engines in those days. If the bus didn't arrive, we had to set off and walk over the footpath over the fields to kip us. Sometimes we never even got that far because the snow drifts were so high Kippock's Parish Church. This is where the whole school came for the school carol service. Then it was time for the pantomime in Leeds. All the buses would arrive in the street. We would either go to the Empire or the Grand Theatre. And we all knew we were in for a good time when we saw them loading the tins of crisps and the bottles of pop into the back of the bus for the interval. In the summer when it was the village outing, all the Wallace Arnold buses would start arriving in the street. We'd be either going to Scarborough or Bridlington. We had to be up early, round about 8 o'clock on a morning. Each bus would be loaded with crates of beer and pop, tins of crisps, ready for the halfway out.
One day, the older lads had an idea. We'd go on a raid to Lexton Hall to try and find the ghost of Mary Pannell. She used to work there in the 1800s. One day, one of the lads became ill and Mary Pannell made a potion. But when she was away, one of the other serving girls gave the lad the potion to drink when it should have only been rubbed on his chest. He died and Mary Pannell was burnt at the stake. That's the wood where Mary Pannell was burnt at the stake. On Sundays, we'd all go to Sunday school and then play out for an hour or two in the afternoon before it was time for tea. It was a surprise when you got home from school to find out that your dad had bought a television. 
But what sort of programs did we use to watch? Come away with William Tell, come away to the land he loved so well. What a day, what a day when the apple fell for Tell and Spitzerland. Come away with William Tell to the mountainside, look down for the path where the tyrants ride. Sit a bow, be a bow, and down they go. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Sailor's tales to sailor's tunes, storm and adventure, heat and cold, if schooners... Ivanhoe! 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 There was no more getting the tin bath out in front of the fire for Dad when he finished work because the coal board had built a new bath house and canteen for them all. As children, we would ride in cars with no seat belts or airbags. We drank water from the garden hose and not from a bottle. Takeaway food was limited to fish and chips. We didn't have pizza shops or McDonald's. We rode bikes or walked to our friends' houses and knocked on the door or rang the doorbell or just yelled out for them. Our mothers didn't have to go out to work to help Dad make ends meet. We would collect old drinks bottles and cash them in at the corner shop and buy toffees, gobstoppers, bubblegum and some bangers to blow frogs up with. The village bonfire in November was always exciting when everybody used to bring their chairs to sit round as well as the potatoes, the hot dogs and the sausage rolls. I remember the potatoes used to be absolutely black when they got them out of the fire and we used to put bangers under their chairs. 
We used to love letting off jumping crackers because you never knew where they were going to jump to. And everybody used to bring their old furniture for the bonfire, what they'd saved up all year. It didn't stop us having a bonfire. Even when it poured down with rain, everybody used to arrive with their umbrellas. Yes, those times were great. The fun, the laughter, the disappointments, the upsets, all the emotions that we could go through, we did. But I certainly would never change anything that happened in those days growing up in Lexton Luck for anything in the world. This film is dedicated to all my young friends who are still with us and those who have departed. I hope you've enjoyed. George Bell comes home and the relations gather. Good Friday 2010 and George Bell returns home to Ledston Luck. As the families gather to scatter his ashes around the village. This was his dying wish. There's nothing like sending George off with a nice glass of champagne. I can just imagine him sitting on that cloud laughing his head off. But they can't blame the family. It was Pat, George's wife's idea. That's the end of broadcasting for today in the BBC Light Programme, with the exception of the shipping forecast on 1500 metres. But we shall be back on the air again tomorrow morning at half past six with the news summary, and the Home Service will be on the air at 6.45 with the market report for farmers. So until then, ladies and gentlemen, good night to you all. Good night.